in 2006, and I have, I have observed a lot of things have changed here in Hong Kong. The gradual progress, the 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 improvement is really visible. Wala pang mga bridges dati, wala pang pero meron ng ano? Meron ng Disneyland. Yun lang pinuntahan namin dito dati. Okay, um, I don't know where to start. Um, as far as I could remember, I grew up in a family, an extended family. Diba yan, yan yung sitwasyon sa Philippines? Ayaw natin lumipat na ibang bahay doon, tayo muna sa, sa parents natin kahit may asawa na. Even if you're married, you still stay there. So it's an extended family situation most of the time in the Philippines. And so we lived in one big ancestral home owned by my grandparents. And so I was the youngest. And so if you're the youngest, all of the love and the care are focused on you. They, it's, everything is given to you, like money. Most of that is money. Because before, during the 70s, hindi pa uso yung born again, born again, by those studies. Upon reaching puberty stage, I, was, I could remember I was 14 years old. I got, that is the stage when we all are so curious about things in life. What is that? I want to know that. I want to try that. I want to... What, what is drinking? What, what, it, what, what is to feel like? What it feels like to be drunk? Ano kayong mangyayari kung magsisigarilyo ako? So ganyan. Yung mga pumapasok sa isip natin. When you reach puberty stage. There are a lot of questions. So, of course, you want to try it. And the first thing that I tried was marijuana the weed I liked it I liked it hallucination was it was really great I mean I can fly to the moon if I wanted to that, that's what's great with marijuana but I'm not saying you take it don't 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 it's difficult to get out from the realm of being addicted to drugs yes. it's so difficult entry is very easy Exit is difficult. Okay, from that day on, um, I kept asking money from my parents until my belongings, all my savings were wiped off. So practically I had zero. So I started to pawn things, jewelry, until I started to steal money from my parents, steal money from my uncle, my aunt. So that's how drugs destroyed my life. I, I screwed up everything until I ran away from home because I was already rejected by my parents and my uncles, aunts. Um, are you familiar with the story of the prodigal son? Yeah. Give him a party. Yeah. Exactly the same thing God will do to everybody who comes to him. If you come to Jesus, all, all the angels will have a party in heaven, Amen. rejoicing over one saved soul. Yeah. So this is what this song is all about. Please can you play um, when God ran? I didn't like that because the haircut was terrible. And I was a dancer, so you need to have long hair and, you know. <clears throat> I decided to audition uh, in the dance troupe. But According to the signage, they only need, they need at least five six in height for males. I'm only five three, but still I audition. Okay, so I danced. And they taught me few few moves, and I, I did the thing. Um, the following day, there was a post on, on the bulletin board, and it says the, the the names of those who passed. My name wasn't there. I was so embarrassed. And then there's one, one teacher who approached me. And hey, Mr. Enriquez, come over. Um, the dean wants to talk with you. So I was scared. Why would the dean want to talk to me? So when I entered her office, she said, yeah, you didn't pass the audition because we want to hire you as a choreographer. So God is more than enough. Yeah. Wow. And I became automatically the president of the dance troupe. So from then on, I, I, I was teaching dance, people how to dance. And then there was a time when Joseph the Dreamer 
it's a musical play, a big musical play in Manila, went to Cebu. And they had to, they can't bring all the cast there via airplane, it's expensive. So they, they decided to just leave the choir members in Manila and audition and have audition, conduct an audition in Cebu for choir members. I audition for choir. And then one of the just said, we will just call you if you pass or not. Okay, the following day, until five o'clock. It was like 10 minutes before five o'clock, nobody called. Suddenly the phone rang and there was this guy who was very author authoritative in, in speaking. He said, I would like to speak with Mr. O'Neill. Yes, this is, speak this is him speaking. Um, actually, um, we want to conduct another audition tomorrow, but we won't be around because we will have an interview with the media. There's a, there will be a press conference tomorrow. So please, Mr. Enriquez, conduct the audition. You will be the judge. So I was judge. God is more than enough. Right? He is more than enough. You ask for 10 pesos, he will give you 20 pesos. He is more than enough. He's unlimited. We are finite. He is infinite. He, because our mind, my, our minds are just limited. He is unlimited. Amen. Time came. I finished three courses in college. First course was computer science. Then I finished um, management, business management, until I finished nursing. Now I'm an, a registered nurse. Okay, so I finished three courses, and that is the reason why I'm now a singer. <laughs> so please, please, if you want to take just one course in college and focus on that, not too many courses. Because you will be out of focus if you have many. That's why I'm now a singer. Totoyan, totoyan. That's true. So, um, I wanted to apply for America. But, um, sadly, Barack Obama won. And he hated Filipino nurses. He didn't like Filipino nurses. So I was left in the Philippines without work, without, I was already like 42 years old. And in the Philippines, if you're old, you cannot find a job that easy, right? So I kept on applying at hospitals. Nobody called me up. So they all preferred younger nurses, like 20 or 21, fresh graduates. So, Lord, what will I do? I started to hit rock bottom now. As in zero, zero balance. So Lord, I was I started to ask money from friends. I was begging, to be honest. I started borrowing money from friends. Until time came that my aunt who was standing for my studies in nursing, she's in she was in America at that time, she died. After that my mom died. So I'm all left alone without people to, without relatives to, to call to, or to call every time I need something. So it was kind of difficult for me. It was just, but the church mates, I was reliant on pastors, church mates. I kept on asking from them just to sustain. And by the way, I have a, an adopted son. He's now 13 years old. Okay, that's how I sustain my, the, the, the daily expenses. Time came. I'll stop and in the middle. That is the person that you are sending me to help. So I did. It was Mira Ting, one of the people I blocked. So I tried to call her up and I was, my fever was 41 degrees. So I was really hot. Uh, she was angry. Why did you block me? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, um, help me. Help me, I'm, I'm fever. I have high fever. Uh, you want me to send you to the hospital? Or send you to the hospital? I'm guesting to TV. Oh. So that's the reason. I think, I, I believe that's the reason. God has done so many things in my life. Amen. Would you believe that I was like jailed for more than three times? That was possible to the jail. But no criminal records at all. Because the pastor namin, siya yung 
sumusod doon ako sa jail ng pinipirmahan niya hindi na uulit si Ranilio you know may waiver eh. so that was it so, a lot of things happened in my life but despite of my being so sinful God's grace surpasses everything He's unlimited yung grace niya eh. so with that said I, I want to give back all the glory all the honor, all the praise and worship to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords.